acknowledge our sins that we may worthily celebrate these sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. fasting, prayer, and almsgiving have shown us a remedy for sin. Look graciously on this confession of our lowliness, that we who are bowed down by our conscience may always be lifted up by your mercy. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Reading from the book of Exodus. In those days, God delivered all these commandments. I, the Lord, am your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, that place of slavery. You shall not have other gods besides me. You shall not carve idols for yourselves in the shape of anything in the sky above or on the earth below or in the waters beneath the earth, you shall not bow down before them or worship them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, inflicting punishment for their father's wickedness on the children of those who hate me, down to the third and fourth generation, but bestowing mercy down to the fourteenth to the thousandth generation on the children of those who love me and keep my commandments. 
You shall not take the name of the Lord your God in vain, for the Lord will not leave unpunished the one who takes his name in vain. Remember to keep holy the Sabbath day. Six days you may labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord your God. No work may be done then either by you or your son or daughter or your male or female slave or your beast or by the alien who lives with you. In six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, but on the seventh day he rested. That is why the Lord has blessed the Sabbath day and made it holy. Honor your father and your mother that you may have a long life in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not kill. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife, nor his male or female slave, nor his ox or ass, or anything else that belongs to him. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are called Jews and Greeks alike, Christ, the power of God, and the wisdom of God. For the foolishness of God is wiser than human wisdom, 
and the weakness of God is stronger than human strength. The word of the Lord. According to John. Since the Passover of the Jews was near, Jesus went up to Jerusalem. He found in the temple area those who sold oxen, sheep, and doves, as well as the money changers seated there. He made a whip out of cords and drove them all out of the temple area with the sheep and oxen, and spilled the coins of the money changers, and overturned their tables. And to those who sold doves, he said, take these out of here, and stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples recalled the words of scripture, zeal for your house consumes me. At this, the Jews answered and said to him, what sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered and said to them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. Therefore, when he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he said, had said this, and they, had came, come, and they came to believe the scripture and the word Jesus had spoken. While he was in Jerusalem for the feast of Passover, many began to believe in his name, and when they saw the signs he was doing. But Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about him in nature. He himself understood it well. The Gospel of the Lord. So much for nice guy Jesus today. He arrives at the temple and he is angry. He takes some cord, makes a whip, comes into the temple, starts overthrowing the money changers' tables. He's whipping the animals to drive them out of the temple. He's spilling the coins, he's overturning the tables, he's setting the doves free and telling people, get them out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. This is a pretty intense gospel and it's a very fundamental moment in our Lord's life because it kind of seals our Lord's fate when it comes to his relationship with the Pharisees, the Sadducees, and the scribes, the leaders of the people. You see, you have to go back to the actual building of the temple. This particular structure was under construction for 46 years which is kind of interesting because the temple is as old as the Blessed Mother. Same age as her. That's a homily for another day. Anyway, the temple always stood there and was reconstructed over the years, so they were restructuring the temple. And there was a section of the temple that was reserved for 
the converts from other religions. So if you were not born Jewish and you decided that you believed in the Jewish faith, you would go through the necessary ceremonies to become Jewish, but because you were a convert, you couldn't go into the actual temple temple. You had to go to this one area to pray. And so this would be the one zone that you were allowed in to pray in the temple if you were a Jewish convert. So that's one thing to remember, keep that in mind. And with that, remember the promise that God made to Abraham. God promised to raise up from Abraham a nation, but then through Abraham, he would bless the whole world. So that part of the temple where converts to Judaism, non-Jewish by blood, could come and pray and remember that the blessing was to be for Abraham, his descendants, and through them to the whole world. So there was this little section of the temple for the rest of the world to come and receive blessing if they came to the faith of the God of Abraham. Now, over the centuries and over time, there was also the law of sacrifice. If you were Jewish, every year you would have to go to Jerusalem and you would have to offer sacrifice for your sins. Depending on what sins you committed, it was a type of confession. So, you know, you might have committed sins that required the sacrificing of a couple of doves, or you may have done something where you had to bring in a goat, and you're standing online looking behind you going, what's the guy with the ox, what did he do? You had to offer sacrifice. So you wouldn't carry all of your flock to Jerusalem, you'd buy it in Jerusalem. You would buy your animals for sacrifice. If you were consecrating your firstborn son, you'd have to sacrifice two turtle doves and two young pigeons or a young lamb, depending on what you can afford. Every year you would go there for the sacrifice of the lamb, for the paschal sacrifice, you would go there. So this was part of the life of the Jewish people, was the constant offering of sacrifice. You would bring your animal to the high priest or the, or the priest. The priest would place his hands on the animal. You would confess your guilt and your sins were kind of like, it was like that animal is taking your place. That animal is sacrificed for what you did. You should die, but the animal's gonna die instead. It's kind of way of saying, what's happening to this animal should happen to me because I offended God and that's what I deserve. Now, of course, the poor animal was innocent, right? But it was a way of expressing sorrow. It was a way of expressing contrition. It was a way of expressing the fact that they were seeking to be redeemed. Now, because of the value of the human person, the human person made in the image and likeness of God, no amount of animals could ever take away our sins. You could sacrifice every animal in the world that would not equal to the dignity of just one human person. The only thing equivalent to us to redeem us would be another man, but it had to be an eternal person. We needed a God-man to offer himself to take away our sins. Hence, Jesus arrives, the God-man. Truly God, truly man, who is going to offer himself in sacrifice for us to obtain for us the forgiveness of our sins. To become the lamb of sacrifice, to become the scapegoat, to become the one who will take upon himself the guilt of us all. To be scourged for our transgressions, wounded for our iniquities. He will be like the lamb led to the slaughter so that we could receive the forgiveness of our sins, to be the one who would make atonement for the sins of every man, woman, and child, beginning with Adam and going to the very last man, yours and mine. So Jesus enters our world and for 33 years he goes to Jerusalem. For 33 years he would go to Jerusalem every year, which is what the Jews would do, and he'd see the scene of this area of the temple reserved for the Jewish converts filled with animals for sacrifice. And not only was this section of the temple reserved for those who were converts, 
And not only was it filled with animals for sacrifice, but the scales were fixed, we're told. In other words, the Pharisees and the Sadducees were selling the animals inside the temple, in the area where only the Jewish converts could pray. They had no place to pray. It was full of animals. And if you bought your animal outside the temple, it was inexpensive. If you bought it inside, it was expensive. If you bought it outside, the priest would not accept it for sacrifice. So in other words, if you want your sacrifice acceptable, you had to buy it inside the temple for double the price. They were cheating people. So imagine you come into church one day and you see I got bingo set up inside the church. And I have it rigged where I'm going to make all the winnings. I hope you would overturn all the bingo tables and burn all the cards. But that's what Jesus is walking into. So when he comes into the temple this time, it is now time. It is now the end of his public ministry. It is the last week of his life. He comes up into that temple and he decides it's time to clean house. And he begins to drive out all the animals. He's getting rid of all of this filth. The filth of the cheating. The filth of taking people's money and so forth. He's getting rid of that filth. But he's also cleaning the area which was for Jewish converts, which is a way of announcing that the time has come for all nations to come to the Lord. That everyone is going to be welcomed to the house of the Lord. It is clean. Everyone come. All nations, all peoples, it is time to come to God. It's time to return to God. It's time to enter into the fullness of the life of God. And so Jesus cleanses that area of the temple that was for converts. Very significant moment, like a very prophetic moment of saying, basically, the kingdom of God is at hand and the kingdom of God will extend to every nation, every people, every land, every race, every culture. All of God's people are now being called into relationship with God. It's all cleared out. Come on in. There's another important part here. He's also driving out these animals, not just to end the filth, not just to clear the way for the rest of the world to come, but he's also making an announcement to the animals. You're free. Go animals. You're free. No longer will you be sacrificed on behalf of man. Go. No more sacrificing goats. No more sacrificing pigeons or doves. No more sacrificing bulls. No more sacrificing goats. No more sacrificing sheep. Because the Lamb of God has arrived. The Lamb of God prophesied by Isaiah. The Lamb who would take away the sins of the world. The Lamb, the one offering, who will offer himself and make atonement for sins. The one who is going to offer himself to the Father and in offering himself to the Father will bring redemption to the whole human race, to Jew and Greek, that the life of God will be extended to every man, woman, and child through the waters of baptism and through the sacramental life. No more worries, sheep. You won't be sacrificed every year anymore. No more worries, bulls, being offered for the sins of men. The one lamb, the one eternal sacrifice has arrived. The God-man, the only one who has the ability, the authority to offer such a sacrifice that it could take away the sins of every man, woman, and child from Adam until the very last man. He has arrived. The King of kings, the Lord of lords, the Prince of peace, the atonement, the Lamb of sacrifice, Jesus Christ. This movement today is not just Jesus being angry and whipping some animals. It very much is about clearing house. It's cleaning out the filth of sin of those who are cheating and stealing. It was cleaning out the house to welcome all in and it was the proclamation 
that the one who has come to take away the sins of the world has arrived. The old covenant, the old law of sacrifice is over. The new law, the new sacrifice, the eternal sacrifice has come. This is the beautiful proclamation of this day, of the reality and the truth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who in his self-gift, in his offering, in his crucifixion, has obtained for us the forgiveness of sins. You and I receive that forgiveness of sins when we entered into the waters of baptism. It was renewed when you and I went to confession again and again and again and again. His forgiveness constantly renewed. His offering perpetuated through time and space. At every time the Holy Mass is offered, the eternal Son of God is offered to the Father. A continual, perpetual sacrifice where you and I get to not only behold it in the self-gift of our Lord and the offering of the Mass, but you and I get to receive him in the gift of Holy Communion. Through the gift of that cross, we also receive the beautiful gift of confirmation to strengthen us in the very life of God. Today is a big day when our Lord Jesus Christ makes a whip and cleans house. A beautiful day, a glorious day, where our Lord proclaims he has arrived. The promise made to Abraham that all nations will be blessed is fulfilled as Jesus arrives and releases the animals, cleans the temple, and eventually offers himself as the gift that takes away the sins of the world. Perhaps today we should do the little meditation, maybe look into our own hearts to see where maybe we have some things in our hearts that don't belong there anymore. Habits of sin, attachments to sin, those words we like to say that we shouldn't say, those thoughts we like to think that we shouldn't be thinking, that every thought we think should be thunk, right? Maybe those things that we do that need to be stopped, those little tables in our, heart, our hearts, those creatures in our hearts that don't need to be there anymore. Perhaps our hearts are no longer open to other people because of pain or hurt or because of anger we haven't forgiven somebody, we've pushed people out of our lives because maybe they said things to us to hurt us. Maybe they're those we have pushed away because of our pain. Maybe it's time to say, okay, Jesus, get out your whip. Come into my heart. Overturn these tables. Drive out these animals that don't belong here. Clean this heart of mine and make it open. Help me to love again. Help me to care about others more than myself. Help me to truly place in my heart a temple for you, where you are adored, where you are worshipped. Maybe we need our Lord Jesus Christ to dethrone the unholy trinity in our heart. I think I've told you what the unholy trinity is. The unholy trinity is me, myself, and I. <laughs> Oftentimes it's the unholy trinity that reigns in our heart through pride and so forth. And our Lord needs to come and dethrone the unholy trinity and enthrone the holy trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit to cleanse this heart of ours. This is the purpose of Lent, is inviting the Lord in to clean out this house to truly make it a place of prayer for the Lord, a place where our Lord and God is loved, a place where our neighbor is truly loved, our hearts a place of purity, a heart a place of kindness, of charity, a heart a place of patience, gentleness, self-control, a place of modesty, a place of generosity, a heart that is able to bear sufferings patiently, a heart of true chastity, a heart where God and neighbor are loved. Our Lord Jesus Christ wants to purify our hearts and make them new again. We have nothing to fear when he comes to do some house cleaning in our hearts because when he's done, 
it's beautiful and it's open and we're capable of loving again in the way we were created to love. Loving the Lord our God with all heart, soul, mind and strength and our neighbor as ourself. So today, let's invite the Lord into the heart. Wash it out, clean it out, drive out those things that don't belong there, Lord. Make it new again. A place of prayer, of love, of zeal for God, and zeal for love of our neighbor. May God bless you and Mary keep you. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in our Father who sent Jesus to purify our hearts, let us turn to him. We pray for Holy Father Pope Francis that his safety during the time in Iraq, that through his ministry and his work he may bring about the conversion of the nations. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all bishops and priests that they may celebrate the sacraments worthily and well. Be true ministers of God's mercy. We pray to the Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world who are suffering imprisonment for the sake of Christ, who some right now facing execution because of their love for Christ. That they be given to grace to love the enemies, do good to those who hate them, to pray for those who persecute them. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our parish, all of our parishioners, all who attend Mass here, that they may always experience the beautiful grace of God and be drawn deep into the mystical love of God. We pray to the Lord. We pray for an end to the pandemic. We pray that there might be peace in our country. We pray that we might have the grace to re return to living life as normal. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those we know who are sick or suffering in any way that this day they might experience healing. We pray to the Lord. Lord. And for the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. Father, you sent your Son to be the Lamb of sacrifice that takes away the sins of the world. And he called us into his own divine life that we might have life and have it to the full. Give us the grace each day to have our lives purified and renewed, that we may know what it means to be loved by you and what it is to love you and our neighbor through Christ our Lord.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, with these sacrificial offerings, and grant that we who beseech pardon for our sins may take care to forgive our neighbor through Christ our Lord. self-denial should give you thanks, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we are claimed. of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you, and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of Therefore, as 
we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope Benedict, our Pope Emeritus, Robert, our Bishop, and all the clergy, remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our day, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. And graciously, grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who we'll live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. As you receive the pledge of things yet hidden in heaven, and are nourished, with, nourished while still on earth with the bread that comes from on high, we humbly entreat you, O Lord, that what is being brought about in us in mystery may come to true completion through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. I do need to go over a couple of things today. If you're not receiving flock notes, I need you to take out your cell phone right now. Take your cell phone out. And you can just text the number, to, to text the name St. James to the phone number, and I didn't read my glasses, 84576. So go, so you're gonna put in the, who's it going to is number 84576, that's the recipient. And you're gonna test, text the words S T James 56. S T James 56. That's the message you're going to send to the number 84576. And what that is, is that'll put you automatically onto Flock Note. And through Flock Note, I'll be able to send you messages, not a lot, not crazy things, but something happens, inform you with things going on in the parish. And it's just a way of updating on things and what's going on in a parish. Um, and there's various groups and stuff. And so if you if you're belong to members of groups in the parish, please join your Flock Note group. Uh, we have our adult faith formation this Tuesday. Well, we're going to continue our class on the Blessed Mother. So uh, we did a lot last week. So if you watch it online, you're going to see there was a lot in the class. So we have to unpack last week's class. So that will be this week we'll start doing that. Uh, the 40 Days for Life campaign uh, takes place on Fridays at 3 o'clock at the abortion clinic in Worcester. Once Lent is over, we'll be back here on Fridays again for our 3 o'clock Divine Mercy Holy Hour. Don't forget Friday, Stations of the Cross at 7 p.m. And I believe it's next Saturday that we have, oh no, I forget the day, I didn't write it down. We're supposed to have another evangelization team meeting soon, but I'll let you know when that's gonna happen. That's why we need flock notes, so I can let you know. Um, and that's pretty much going on this week. There's a lot in the bulletin to keep up with. Uh, the Partners of Charity is still going on. We're more than halfway there in our collection for the diocese. We need to raise $40,000 for the diocese. That's our, uh, what we're supposed to hit. And we're about at 20 something right now. So please continue to give to that. But again, that should be over and above what you give to the parish. And I need to say once again, an incredible thank you. In January, we were trying to figure out what bills we're gonna pay. And you stepped up and the money that you're sending in is helping the parish get through. and. It blows us away. Celeste and I on Friday were just kind of just relaxed finally <laughs> to be able to just laugh again knowing that you've stepped up to such a beautiful way that is just amazing. Uh, increasing your offerings every week, some of you doubling your offerings, some of you dropping a thousand dollars, a couple of, few of you just to help. And uh, it's been amazing and you really helped us get through a hard time. And, uh, just so grateful for that because this isn't for me. It isn't for the it's for the parish It's for all of us to enjoy this beautiful gift of st. James that we have this beautiful church our hall I mean all of our religious ed all the different events the groups going on. It's, it's incredible So thank you from a heart. Thank you. And now if you keep doing this I won't have to bring up money again <laughs> except when they make me <laughs> So that's good. because I hate money um, but truly have a beautiful, blessed weekend. Enjoy the, the weather. It looks like it's supposed to get a bit better. So uh, have a beautiful weekend, and we'll see you all very soon. Stay involved, stay in touch, and stay healthy. And get holy or die trying. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. Direct, O Lord, we pray, the hearts of your faithful. And in your kindness grant your servants this grace, that abiding in the love of you and their neighbor, they may fulfill the whole of your commands through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle.
be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who crowd about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.